Hello, this is Norwich 93 CMP again. We're going to talk about the M1 Grand's lock bar uh, sight system for the rear sight. This is the late World War II version. For brevity, we're going to say that you saw the earlier video. And when we do our installation, normally we would just check the rear sight cover, base, and aperture, make sure they're clean. So if you take out your newer style rear sight, which looks like this. You would remove that and we're going to go and insert our lock bar system. We're going to go through the parts right now. This is the elevation cap screw, the elevation cap, the rear sight pinion with the later style uh, threads which are coarser than the earlier type ones which are finer. The elevate, excuse me, the windage knob. This does not have anything on the inside of it. It's not pressed in like the older style. The spring that's going to be with our bushing for the lock bar. This is the bushing. It has two nipples on it. You need to make sure this is clean also. Also inside this hole. And make sure your threads are clean on your lock bar. This lock bar is the later style. This has squared off 90 degree ends to it. The earlier style had a rounded end to it. You can see the difference there. We're going to use the later style. This is the coarser thread. This one came in two different types of threads. The earlier finer and the later coarser. We're going to put this late style on now. So one of the first things that I do is I take my bushing and I mount it inside the, the spring. Then I'll insert it into my windage knob. It'll end up being a little bit above or about flush. Kind of put that to the side, right side up. Making sure my threads are nice and clean. All my ridges are nice and clean. Not only on the pinion itself, but inside the cap in these areas. I'm going to put my cap on and put the screw on. When I do this, it's sitting there lightly. I don't want to cross thread it, so what I'm going to do and show you guys. I'm using my M10 tool, and I'm actually going to go backwards as if I'm loosening until it clicked. It actually just clicked just then, seated nicely, and now I'll tighten. This way you know it doesn't cross the red. I'm only going to snug it gently by hand, because when you zero, you're going to get a, probably a change to this. So I'm just going to put it on for demonstration's sake. So now I have basically the pinion is set. My windage knob is set and my lock bar the same as putting installing the the rear sight late type i'm going to make sure that my holes are lined up and you can see right now they're a little off center so i got to move my base you can see the teeth from the aperture in there okay i'm going to put it in i'm going to be careful again to watch the flat side me personally i like to put the flat side up And you can see it's off center here to the hole, so I gotta move it and put it in. You'll notice that this is off center. I'm gonna straighten it out. I'm keeping thumb pressure up now. Now, very carefully, what I do in here is I look where the bushing is, and there's a flat side to it. You can just barely make it out. See the flat side? I'm going to make sure that this flat side marries up and it's pointed up. So for this one, I'm going to use, let's say, the T. And that's going to be my up position. Okay, so I'm moving around to the T. And it's going to match up. slide the base down a bit so that my elevation comes down I'm double checking for my flat portion it fits over it I can feel the spring to it that means it's sliding over and what I'm going to do now is 
I'm going to make sure I thread this on properly. I'm going to back thread it as if I'm loosing it until I hear my click. Then I'm going to put it onto the threads. This is pretty hard to do. I think I felt a bump right there. I'm keeping it square. Oh, cross threaded there. There we go. Actually, what I'm going to do is thread the windage into the rear sight a little bit so I get more of a bite on my threads. Pushing down backwards until I get my click. It's hard to do with a camera in the middle. There we go. There we go. And it should go on relatively easy okay I'm not going to torque it all the way down because what I want to do is not have tension onto the onto the windage knob I want to make sure I catch the threads of the windage knob into the rear sight base I can tell it's kind of pretty far down but I'm not sure if it's caught or not so as I'm clicking you can you can hear the windage knob picking it up with the pressure all right, now I know it's in. What I'm looking at right here are the ears centered. It's approximately the right spot. Now I can tighten the lock bar down all the way. Now I'm hearing clicking. See if I can make, hear it. All right, so that would be in a lock position. I can't make any adjustments. What had happened also to to prevent the removal of the lock bar was they would upset the pinion so it would be staked. Now if I go down to zero I need to loosen this before I make any adjustments. Once you do your battle sight zero you can loosen this up and put the appropriate position of the arrow on the appropriate numbers. That's how you install a lock bar and just to take it apart it's the reversal process. You're going to remove the lock bar itself first. Be very careful of the pressure that's underneath on the bushing in the spring. Remove the windage knob next from the base and the pinion will slide out just like I had the video earlier in the late type rear sight. And that's how you install a lock bar sight system on a World War II M1 Grand.